It's great to see you. We have one enthusiast for Christmas here. I heard it. Hey, it's great to be with you this morning here on the beach where church was invented. I don't know if that's true, but I like to think it was. We're having an opportunity this morning to truly celebrate and enter into the significance and the depth of this season and this holiday and to lean into something that is saturated with hope and joy. And for those of us that are walking through valleys right now, hope is what we need. And I just want to say welcome to friends and family. Obviously, we have a, an entire parade and a little a beautiful army of the cutest shepherds. I think there was a camel, there was a, a pig, which there was, I mean, there's all kinds of different little farm animals and creatures and heavenly creatures right over here that we're going to be enjoying their performance today. So we're really looking forward to that. Let me pray. We're going to start off with some singing, some Christmas carols and Lord and whatever else we're going to be worshiping. Lord, thanks for this morning. Thanks for a chance to be able to put our feet in the sand and look at the end of the world. Look at the, uh, the largest body of water on this planet as we join the chorus of the heavens and the earth and proclaiming your goodness and your presence and your power. We love you. We surrender now our hearts and lives to you. Um, Lord, teach us through the kids today. Teach us through those little kids about who you are and about what is, what is important in this world. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's worship. Behold the King has come, Divinity incarnate, Creator of the world, breathing our air. Behold what light has come, behold what light has come, and the dark cannot, the dark cannot contain it. The Savior of the world is finally here. Let's sing this together. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. Behold the Father's love. Behold the Father's love. Beyond all comprehension, He gave His only Son to die in our place. Go and see. Go and see that empty tomb. He's not there for He is. I'll sing this together. We give you all the glory. 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 Cry the Lord. Let's sing it again together. We give you all the glory. Oh, 
come, let us adore him one last time. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. Amen. We're going to move into a time of Advent, I'm going to invite Garrett, Garrett and Alex to come up. And with Advent, we celebrate it every Sunday. If you're not familiar with the tradition, um, we anticipate his first coming and we anticipate his second coming. So they're going to come up and read a verse in honor of him. You guys can take this mic. On the fourth week of Advent, we light the final surrounding candle, the angel's candle, that symbolizes peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, and the peace the angels spoke over Joseph. Uh, Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. invite James up. He's always the social pastor in the back, connecting with everyone. Give it up for James, one of our faves. Wait, let's do that again. Give it up for James Pettiville! It's not social, okay? This is, I was interceding in prayer for all of you. It's so good to be with you. Good morning and welcome families and friends and um, first timers and billionth timers. Uh, and thanks, Ron, for just keeping it going behind the mic, the microphones and the, I don't know, newfangled technology of filming, of filmmaking. Um, we're in for a treat this morning, and we're in for a treat this whole week. I don't know. The calendar kind of worked out nicely, if you ask me. I love it when it's like you get the full week, and then there's Christmas, right? That's kind of sweet. And we get to share this first, or this last Sunday before Christmas together. Uh, and I'm so delighted. I just wanted to welcome you, especially if it is your first time with us or your first time in a long time. Uh, you belong here this morning. Even if it's the last time we ever see you, you just come for this and you go about your life and we hope it's a beautiful, purpose-filled life. Um, if, it that, if it's the only time we see you, you belong this morning and we're thankful that you're here and you're part of the family. So uh, I want to just mention a couple cool things. Interesting week with the schedule, obviously we have Coming up, our Christmas Eve service is at 4 p.m. at the Catalina Room, which is, if you don't know where that is, check our website, riversouthbay.org. Um, it's a wonderful little place right on Catalina Avenue. And we're going to have our service starting at 4. A little jazz, Christmas jazz, live jazz will begin at about 3.45. So if you wanted to get there, featuring none other than Theodore Windorf, Todd Windorf, the Honorable... Archbishop of this place. Um, he's going to be playing some music as well. And I might bring the ukulele and just kind of crash the whole thing. Just show up and say, hey, what do I do? But that's going to be happening. It's going to be a short service. We know that it's a big day and really expensive real estate in the um, the calendar year of your, your plans. And so we keep it nice and tight, one hour. And um, it's going to be a great chance to celebrate together and get you out of there, get you to some other celebrations. But that will be kind of our family celebration as a church. Christmas Day, Christmas morning, we are not having a service. And um, if you want to come down to the beach and worship, I encourage you to do that. But we also recognize it's an important time for family and friends to be together uh, in the homes. 
And so we're going to have no service Christmas Day. And then New Year's Day, I'm really excited about this. All right. New Year's Day, we're on the beach. It's an all beach. And um, I get to preach. So I get to preach on anything I want in the whole wide world. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do. Very excited about that. And it's going to, it's, it's normally 830. I'm going to call it a real soft start. All right. I'm just going to say it's New Year's Day. So we're looking more like eight, nine, I'm going to say 845 into the nine range. I don't know. We'll get it started. Show up down here. Uh, maybe stay up all night. Maybe stay up all night and just stay. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, this is not a river thing, but it's the thing I'm doing. I'm going to jump into the Pacific Ocean just in some trunks to ring in the new year. All right. So if you want to join me for a little polar plunge, Ron is down. Ron is committed. He's, he's nodding his head. I think that's a tradition all around the world. With that being said, um, we have an amazing Christmas play coming up. Am I inviting the kids up? I, forget. I believe I am. I believe I am inviting the kiddos up. So let's all now take a moment and let's learn some deeper truths from the kids right now and uh, the people who Jesus spent uh, prioritized and wanted to have in and around his life and ministry. And, and uh, let's, let's invite them up to, to join us. So here come the kiddos. So angelic, oh, there we go. Hi, so these are the River Kids, and it is their... <laughs> I know, aren't they cute? It is their delight <laughs> to bring in the real meaning of Christmas and to tell you guys the precious story of Jesus' birth. 
And I think it matters so much more when we hear it from the mouths of babes. Um, I predict that there will be a few running up and back and that is all great. So enjoy this moment. Once a long time ago, there was a young girl named Mary. God sent an angel named Gabriel to visit the young Virgin Mary. Gabriel appeared before Mary and said, Greetings you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was frightened, so she fell down and covered her face. The angel said, <clears throat> Don't be afraid, Mary, because you are chosen to have a special baby who is to be called Jesus. He will be God's son. He will reign forever and his kingdom will never end. Mary said, I will obey you, Lord. Whatever you want, I'll do. Join us as we sing Silent Night. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and spoke, Joseph, do not be afraid. Mary will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angels of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. He loved her and was honored to, uh, and was honored to raise God's son. Many months passed by. Joseph and Mary heard that they must travel to Bethlehem to be counted in a census decreed by Caesar Augustus. Mary was worried about traveling so far because she was about to have a new baby. So, jo so Joseph provided her with a donkey to ride upon. When Joseph and the tired Mary arrived in Bethlehem, Joseph went door to door telling them that his wife was with child, a child and that even a small room would be enough, but the crates had been taken and the rooms were full. Finally, one innkeeper offered his stable out in the back. So the innkeeper took them back. So the innkeeper took them back to the humble stable. It was here among the animals, where no one was watching, that the Son of God was born. Mary wrapped Jesus up in swaddling clothes and laid him on the manger. Let's all sing away in the manger together.
Meanwhile, outside Bethlehem, some shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep at night. Suddenly, the sky was filled with a bright and glorious light. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel Gabriel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a great sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The shepherds left their sheep and hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. They bowed down before him and ran to spread the word about what had been told to them about this, about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them, but Mary treasured all, all these things and pondered them in her heart. Join us as we all together sing, Hark the Herald Angel Sing. Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, good in heaven reconciled. Newborn King, hail the heavens as it please, as the crown of righteousness is as he brings, risen with healing wings, mild he lays his glory with him will he die, born to rise the sun of earth. Born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east following a star came to Jerusalem to talk to Herod. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. Herod told the wise men to go back and find this child that Isaiah prophesied about, and when they found it, him to report back to him. The wise men went on their way. They followed the star until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and bowed down and worshiped the infant king and gave their valuable gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, treasures for a king. It was quite a crowd gathered that, the, that night. Today we gathered again to rejoice in his birth. Join us as we sing Joy to the World. Nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. 
my goodness, that is so beautiful. We got another big hand. Let the whole beach hear. Oh, that was so wonderful. So special. What special moments. These are seriously special moments. Thank you so much, and Kathy, for your incredible work and the whole team. Um, we're going to give you a, a chance to just stand up and stretch for a couple of minutes. Say hi to a couple people around you. It'll be a bit shorter than normal. Um, so just go ahead and stand up, say hi, maybe to two or three people right around you. I'm going to call you back in about like a minute here. So go ahead and say hello, and I'll call you right back up. I want to, uh, I want to introduce you to someone with our church here, Todd Wendorf. You may remember him as founding pastor of the River Church of the South Bay and my boss um, and my best friend, one of my best friends. Todd's going to give us just a little uh, little word at the end of the year here. So, Todd, by the way, you look good in that flannel. Thank you. I just want to be the first to say it. Yeah. Well, thanks, James. I appreciate that. Uh, how'd you guys like that play? Was that awesome? I love the, the wise man with the sword. I love that. At the River Church, we give out swords, and uh, those things are wielded with power, great power. Love the star. Uh, love the little kids. My granddaughter was... Uh, rocking i think you you can't you can't that wasn't part of the play but she was doing a great job but wanted to thank you all um i am not an archbishop as uh, james points out i noticed many of you laughed a bit when uh, he did mention that but i am part of your staff and i want to on behalf of our river staff thank you for just a fantastic year and in one particular area we as a church give and if you're part of our church, we just want to thank you at the end of the year. And this, we thought this would be the best opportunity since uh, next time we meet will be Christmas Eve and then the end of the year uh, is upon us. But we want to thank you for that because it does represent a part of your faith that's really important. To give is to have faith. And we always give to a vision. And the vision here is the same vision that the Apostle Paul had uh, for the churches all throughout the Mediterranean region to reach people for Christ, to introduce them to what we just saw here, the birth of Christ and his life. And so thank you. We want to thank you in advance. Um, we have about a $1.5 million budget here at the river. We have a fantastic team of, of volunteers that help manage those funds and direct those funds to worthy uh, parts of our ministry, which is to reach people in the South Bay for Christ through Alpha, through Hume Lake, through all sorts of young people's ministry. Uh, that is a key component of the river, is that we want to expose more and more people to the hope that we find the hope that we are talking about this morning, which is the hope of Christmas, the coming of Jesus. That is the most important thing. And hopefully what you took away from even this play this morning is that, is that Christ has come to bring us the light. So thank you for that. Thank you. We're about, we have about $500,000, a little bit less than $500,000 to raise at the end of the year, which we normally do. So thank you. We want to thank you in advance for your faithfulness, for your walk in Christ, and part of that walk in Christ is giving back, giving of your resources as a sign of your faith. It's part of spiritual maturity, so thank you for that. Um, we're going to invite Bill up. He's going to do a fantastic job of completing Luke chapter 2. We've been talking about the darkness and the coming of light, and Jesus is the light, and now we are going to come and see. We're going to be invited to come in and learn about Jesus and the light, so thank you, Bill. Thank you, Todd. <clears throat> Never <clears throat> follow children. Uh, I think that's what comedians say, and I'm not a comedian, so I'm good. I'm safe. Uh, we've been taking a deep dive into one part of this Christmas story, Luke chapter 2. And uh, I want to take us one step further. We're in Bethlehem on the hillside outside the city. And uh, this is the story of uh, the shepherds. And the angels show up to them. And uh, I just want to focus right now on just one verse. It says in Luke 2, chapter 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, 
the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now, if you look at that verse and see how the literal words play out, I was caught by these two phrases. Literally, they say, let us go and then let us see. And that's what I want to focus on this morning. Christmas time, going and seeing. And in verse 16, it says, so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Well, the angel spoke to them. What did the angel say? You heard one of the children say this, what the angel said. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. You know, I'm struck by the fact that every time you heard angels talking to Mary, to Joseph, even to Zechariah, and to the shepherds, the angel always said, don't be afraid. Why? Because they were terrified with what was happening around them. It was shocking. The angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. The good news of the gospel is all wrapped up in an announcement for all people centered in Jesus. The good news is not an idea. It's not just facts. It's not a theory. The good news is a person. And the person was this baby. And he was to be given the name Jesus. I mean, this to me is astounding and it's become so familiar that it's easy to just let it pass by. But the Lord of the universe arrives as a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. I can imagine God. I don't know what it was like, but with all the angels and all that was happening in heaven, getting this idea of how he was going to make things new again, how he was going to set to right everything that was wrong. I can imagine God beginning to chuckle, in fact, laughing and saying, I got this crazy idea and nobody is going to get it. You know what I'm going to do? I, the creator, the God of the universe, I'm going to come into their world as a baby in a manger. There, there's just no way you or I would ever think of that story. But God did. Now think about those shepherds for a few moments. They're four to five miles outside of Bethlehem, and they're on, they're on a hillside. How, how many shepherds do you think there were? Like, I don't think there were very many. It was probably just a handful of dudes out there. It's the middle of the night. It's dark. It's cold. They're out there protecting sheep. That's their job. And the entire world's asleep. And then this happens. I, I think this morning for just a couple moments, the shepherds can lead us in Advent. Let, let's let them lead us. I think there's, um, there's a couple different Christmases going on. I mean, you feel them. You're part of them. One has to do with malls and Amazon, right? It has to do with presents. It has to do with family and wonderful food and celebration and snowball. Well, maybe not snowball fights here, but you know, just like, like, um, it, it's, it's so good, but there's pressure, you know, we feel pressure. Maybe some, uh, not to over, generalized, but, but, but some of you are feeling like, I got a whole week till Christmas. And others of you are feeling like, oh no, it's coming. And I'm not ready. I'm not ready for whatever I'm supposed to be doing. This Christmas is about money and credit card debt in January. It just, it, it's filled with so many expectations that you and I have grown up with that we feel like we have to get swept away with it because we can't fight it. And you know, this Christmas, this Amazon Christmas, it doesn't need Jesus, right? Jesus is, is re irrelevant to that Christmas. So, but this morning we saw a, another Christmas. 
we saw second Christmas that is the shepherd saying in the middle of the night, just a few guys, dirty and smelly, guarding their sheep saying, oh my goodness, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. That was the original Christmas. And you know what? They didn't need Amazon, the malls, or presents, or money. No, they just said, let's get there, let's go, and let's see. So uh, Todd introduced us to the first scene with these shepherds where the angel showed up in the middle of the night with this pyrotechnic announcement of the good news that God had entered the world as a baby. That was the first scene, and they had no choice about it, right? They were the recipients of an announcement. But now we get to the second scene that I'm focusing on this morning, and that is they had a decision to make. Now it was their turn to make a response in light of what they'd seen, what they heard. Now, the shepherds don't tell us the whole story of faith, but, but they tell us the beginning. They tell us the beginning, their decision to get up and to go. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. So I just want to reflect for a couple of moments. Let us go and let us see. The shepherds lead us in Christmas by inviting us to decide to go. And it's a time for a decision. It's a time for a response. A response to the world around us. A response to, to what's happening in our lives, in our families. A response to the good news that inserts itself into our world, even through the children this morning. It requires some initiative. And, you know, we've been, we've been lighting, well, we haven't been really lighting We've been placing candles as we celebrate each week of Advent. And as Amanda reminded us, um, in the Advent candles, we anticipate the first Advent, that's Jesus being born in a manger, and then we're also ready for the second Advent. We anticipate the fact that the first time Jesus came in a manger as a baby, but the second time he'll come as the Lord of the universe, returning to take those he loves to be with him. But I would suggest that there's another advent right in the middle. And that's the birth of Jesus in my heart. There's an advent that is a decision on my part to say yes to that savior. For me to take the initiative to go, to move, toward Jesus. It's, it's, the, it's the awakening of faith. And you've probably felt that before, whether you're a um, long time like, follower of Jesus and you kind of understand all this, or you, you're just kind of new to it and you're thinking, there, there's something bigger than me going on. There's, there's light out there. There's something warm. There's something good that's out there in spite of um, the craziness of the world that we live in. This is the first crossing the line of faith. It's, it's like, it's this, it's this step that we take where we say, I'm going to go. I'm going to move toward this light, this truth, this Jesus. It's a time when we can say, um, the government of my own life is going to be placed on the shoulders of the Christ. And I would suggest, because I know this is true for me, that it has to be renewed often. This, this crossing the line of faith, this trust, this yielding my life to Jesus, it has to be renewed over and over. That's why we gather Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, rain or shine, you never have to wonder if the river's going to meet on the beach Except for what James said, we're not meeting on Christmas Day. But we, if it's raining, if there's a tornado, well, if Anto tells us there's lightning and a tornado, we can't meet here. But that's why we meet every week. To renew this faith inside of us, because we need it. We get beat down. 
And Christmas needs to be renewed every year. Because let's face it, in 2022, a lot of you experienced a significant amount of pain and loss. And that's the weird juxtaposition of Christmas where it's all joy and beauty and happiness and family. And yet I know while we sit here on the beach that inside you also have this churning of it can't live up to the expectations, the pressure. And we do our best, but we know inside there's still another story going on. And so we have to renew our faith again and again and guard against cynicism and combat busyness because we don't want to be Scrooge, do we? We don't want to be the Grinch. But there's something inside of every human heart that can cause us to move in that direction. So the shepherds show us they took the initiative to go to move toward Jesus. And the shepherds didn't know much. The angels just made the announcement They didn't know everything about following Jesus, but they just got up, they hurried, and they went. And so I wonder this morning, what would it look like for us? Uh, what, What would it look like for you this Christmas to take some steps toward Jesus with a fresh heart, an open heart, a renewed faith, or even a first time faith of stepping toward Jesus. But uh, they show us, uh, not only let's go, but let's see. They said, let us go and see. Let's go see. Let us see. Let, let's, get a, let's get a look. This was up close and personal. Not, not from a distance, but up close and and personal, to see Jesus with your own eyes, not, not through the eyes of another person. The word someone else says, uh, I live in the Delphi, where Luke and Hans, uh, Luke and Brittany and Hans and Tina live. It's a lovely place, that gray, uh, tall apartment building with the, with the elevator shaft in the back. And uh, all of us live on the ocean side, so we got, we got this view every day. And uh, I often sit on my chair and talk with God. And as the sun comes up, I can see dolphins coming by the window from a distance. And uh, it's really cool. But that's from a distance. And so sometimes I'll take out my binoculars and I'll, I'll, get, a, I'll get a closer look. Wait, wait, is that a whale or a dolphin or... Maybe a shark. And, uh, and so then I can see it better with, with binoculars. But then sometimes I get my paddleboard and I walk down here and I paddle over the cove. There's something really different about seeing a dolphin from a distance from your balcony and all of a sudden have it surface right next to you and hear it breathing. And you know what? They are so much bigger than we think they are when we see them from a distance. And this is the invitation of the shepherds to move from a balcony faith to in the water faith, like to get in there and, and really see it. And so I, you know, I, I love uh, lights at Christmas. You know, Christmas is a, is a season of lights and you have them on your tree, maybe on your house, maybe you've gone walking in the Christmas neighborhood, the light neighborhood. And uh, I, I just, I love those lights. You know what other light I love? I love the light of morning after I've had one of those nights that I know you've had. When you wake up at like two or three in the morning and then you begin thinking about stuff and your life and things you're supposed to do, and money, and family, and kids. And then the thoughts go to yourself, and you start now with self-recrimination. And isn't it weird how in the middle of the night, you can have these terrifying conversations with yourself about your life, and then the sun comes up, and the light shines in your window, and you get perspective, and you realize, oh, wait a minute. 
it's not that bad. You know, another light that I really love when you go backpacking and you're out there in the wilderness and you build a fire because you're deathly afraid that a mountain lion or a bear is going to come and eat you. And there's just something so uh, um, safe and warm and comforting about a fire in the wilderness. We, we need light. We need light in order to see. And in the Bible, light in contrast to darkness is a picture of goodness and beauty. Whenever you see light in the Bible, it's, it, it's talking about God and Jesus and faith and peace and purity. It's a beautiful thing. In fact, one of the prophecies that the, 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 the early Jews anticipated was from Isaiah 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. There's something about light in the Bible. And two weeks ago, Todd gave this line that stuck with me. The greater the darkness, the greater the light. And my friends, we do live in a darkening world. And the angel said, hey, th don't be afraid. Th this light is dawning. The, the, the end of your anxious night is coming and the light is rising. But this morning, I know there's some obstacles to seeing. One, of course, is darkness. Okay, when we're in the dark, we have a really hard time being able to see, right? But another obstacle to seeing is distraction. It is possible to be so distracted by all sorts of shiny objects that we miss the main thing. Another obstacle to seeing is fog. And uh, I want to tell another paddling story. It's about Todd and myself. We, we entered into a race, a race to the R10 buoy, which is a, a, bit, a bit out there. And uh, so we all lined up here, and they sent us out into the water. It was one of those windy, cold, the water was all bumpy, not ideal for paddling at all. And uh, it kind of foggy. So we take off. We're going, and Todd and I are way in the back, and uh, all the youngins were just whooping us, but we get out past the peninsula, and it's getting foggier and foggier, and then uh, the race organizers had their boat out there, and they stopped us all, and there we were. We were stopped in this little pool of light with nothing but fog around us, and they said, we're calling the, we're calling the race off because we're afraid of those two old guys going the wrong way and getting lost. Have you ever been in fog? Have you ever been in the ocean in fog? You can get lost so easy because there's, there's no landmarks. There's, there's no trail. There's no forest. There's, there's nothing but water. And you go, I don't know if the land is that way or that way. So they wisely called the race off and, uh, and we headed back home, which was a relief because it was so cold and bumpy and miserable and we were last. <laughs> but fog can obscure your vision and fog comes in all sorts of ways. But actually, there's another obstacle and that is bias. Sometimes we can't see because we've made up our mind or the algorithms have made up our mind for us. We all have biases that cause us to be able to see or not see, to see certain things, but other things are invisible to us. And that may be true about Christmas. But the last one, the one I think is, is the most insidious that's so prevalent today, and that is there's an obstacle to seeing that's called indifference. We're just, we're just indifferent. We're just going through life and we don't really care. Ali Wiesel said, the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. The opposite of love is not hate. It's far worse than hate. It's just flat out indifference. And the shepherds got up 
And they hurried to see Jesus, to really see Jesus. And to be honest, um, most people in Bethlehem and Jerusalem and Rome, they never saw Jesus, ever. Jesus was born, and the next morning, everyone got up and went to work. They just went about their day. But God had just entered into the world. And people yawned, went about their day. But in verse 18, all who heard what the shepherds said were amazed and said to them, this is incredible. And I kind of reflected, how, how many people heard the shepherds? It wasn't that many people. And I think the same is true today. I think we live in a world that is mostly indifferent to the real Christmas. Indifferent to Jesus. Indifferent to the amazing good news that God has taken the initiative to come into our world as a baby and live amongst us. Indifference. Can't see it. Invisible. No faith has been ignited inside. No initiative to go. No ability to see. So this morning, I just want to give us a couple minutes to reflect. And here we are on the beach. I mean, it's just gorgeous down here. And in the midst of this season, in the midst of, of all that's on your plate, all of the, the distractions, all the fog that settles down in your life, a, a moment to check our bias and maybe even to shake off indifference. I want to just give us a minute or two to be quiet in this beautiful place. I want to give us an opportunity just to for a moment, prioritize our lives. To just breathe. To breathe for a moment. And to say all the other, all the other parts of Christmas, they're, they're, they're gonna, they'll happen after, after this morning. I'll get to them, but for a minute or two, let's set them aside. The angel said, don't be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. You can be calm. You can breathe. It's going to be okay. Because God took the initiative before we ever had to. And maybe this might be a moment of awakening of faith. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never Walk in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. So I just want to invite you, just we'll be quiet together. Just reflect and see what Jesus does inside of your heart, inside of this Christmas season. And Amanda will um, lead us out of a moment of silence and reflection into our last worship song. And then James will come and uh, we'll celebrate at the table. So will you just take a couple deep breaths? Just breathe in the life and light of the real Christmas season. Just breathe in and let, let the anxiety, let the worries that come in, just let them come and then let them go. Just let them, let them blow on. And just for your own soul, for your own health, your own heart, 60 to 75 seconds of just calm and peace.
In this place of reflection, I want to invite you all to stand. Um, we're going to finish with a worship song and come to the table.
so much hope, so much hope we speak of and we live, we live in. And Bill, I just thank so much for bringing us that um, just super important, real message. I love that metaphor or just the lived experience of the terrors of the night that I think a lot of us can find ourselves slipping into around that two, three, four a.m. moment. And you're racing and you're racing. And when the light dawns, suddenly you realize it's gonna be okay. And the fact that this is what the angels are announcing for an entire people, for an entire species, for a planet, light is dawning in this child. So we end our service every week down here um, with just kind of a free flow communion, which is just, there's, there's these little they look like hourglasses, and on one side is a little grape juice, other side is a little bitty wafer. These are really just little symbols of a much greater truth, which is that this Jesus who was born would then give his life for our sins. And then that morning of the resurrection, when that tomb is open, like we were singing about, like that morning came that we celebrate. So we close like this. Um, We'll have a little music playing. Come, grab some communion, take it as you'd like. The service is over, uh, except we have one last ritual. It's the annual ritual of the hay bale carry, which I'm most excited about. So Brian will lead us in that time-honored tradition. Um, so I'm gonna invite you now, come forward, take some communion, give some hugs or conversations or whatever's gonna happen. We're, we're just gonna end with celebration. So Merry Christmas, we'll see you Christmas Eve. 4 p.m. Catalina Room and then New Year's Day here back on the beach.